Today, we're going to take a good hard look at the system that I have been brewing with for just about the past year, the Clawhammer Supply 120 volt, 10 gallon, all in one electric system. I've been brewing with this system for about the last 11 months and I am up to about 21 brews on it. Uh, that does include some brews that have not made their way to the YouTube channel yet. So I feel like I've got a pretty good handle as to how the system works and uh, what its particular strengths and weaknesses are. If at any point during this video you want to check out the system, there's a link in the description box which will take you to their site where you can check out the system for yourself. So if you're not already familiar with Clawhammer Supply, they are known for a couple different things. First of all, the systems that they make, but also they have a fantastic YouTube channel. And actually they just recently passed their 100,000 subscriber mark, which is awesome. It's well deserved. They make some of the best homebrewing content on YouTube. And if you're not subscribed to them already, you should go check them out. And if you're interested in their systems, please keep watching this video. Before we get too much further into the video, and because this is a product review video, um, I just want to disclose my relationship with Clawhammer Supply. So they reached out to me about uh, a year ago and asked me if they could send me their system uh, to brew with. I accepted that offer and they sent me the system and I have been brewing with it ever since. Full disclosure, I do receive a small compensation for using their system in my videos. However, I have never been required to say or not say any specific thing about their system. Kyle and Emmett from Clawhammer are really down to earth people. They believe in their product and they stand by it so they don't see a need to restrict what people say about their system. So with that out of the way, I hope you can see that there's not going to be any particular bias towards or against the system and now we can start to actually talk about it. So Clawhammer Supply makes two major systems. They make a 120 volt 10 gallon kettle version and a 240 volt 20 gallon kettle version. Therefore each of these systems is geared towards 5 and 10 gallon batches respectively. These are both based on a brew in a basket design which is basically where you take the concept of brew in a bag and you replace the bag with a stainless steel mesh basket instead. Brew in a bag or brew in a basket, whatever you want to call it, is a proven method uh, for producing great all grain beer with a minimal equipment footprint. Nowadays, there are many, many all-in-one electric brewing systems out there, and this concept is used by virtually all of them. When you buy a Clawhammer system, it's going to ship in a big box. Inside that box, you're going to have your kettle, you're going to have a grain basket, you're going to have a pump, a digital controller, and a bunch of tubing and accessories as needed, as well as an electric element. Uh, it also comes with a mesh stainless steel hop spider and a mesh stainless steel bazooka screen. It also comes with a small plate chiller. There is some assembly required. For the sake of this video, I'm not going to show you how to do that. Those resources are available on Clawhammer Supply's website or on their YouTube channel. Assembly of the system does not take very long. You can very easily put it together, leak test it, and begin brewing with it all within about an hour. They also have a neoprene jacket, which I use in my system. I'm not sure if it comes with the actual system since they developed that after I received my system from them. However, it is a nice accessory to have, um, and I would recommend getting it if you want to get one of these systems. Usage of the system really is very easy. For a typical five gallon batch of beer, I'll start out with about eight gallons of strike water. I will heat that up to an appropriate mash temperature, usually about 152 in most cases for most beers is, is a good mash temperature. You set the temperature on your controller, you walk away for a while, eventually it gets up to mash temperature and the controller will start beeping at you so you know it's ready. At that point I like to hook up my hoses and the pump and make sure the pump is all primed and ready to go. And then I will dough in with my grains. I'll mix everything up nicely in the grain basket, make sure there's no clumps etc etc uh, and then I'll start recirculating wort right away the wort will recirculate through the bottom of the kettle through the pump and back up through the lid and there is a spray valve in the top of the lid this spray valve distributes the wort across the entire surface of the mash that way you don't end up with any sort of channeling as you would if you had just a straight tube outlet going you know into one specific part of your mash because of the design of the all-in-one system, and this is true for any brand of all-in-one system, it's extremely easy to step mash, it's extremely easy to change your mash temperatures um, and set them very precisely to maintain a precise temperature over the course of your entire mash. Um, and the same thing is true with the Clawhammer Supply System. Towards the end of my mash, I'll typically just set my uh, controller to 168 or 170 Fahrenheit for what's called a mash out. And that step, long story short, just helps to drain the grain basket a bit easier. Um, so I'll let that sit at that temperature for about 15 minutes and I'll pull out the grain basket, 
There's three little hooks that come with the system and you attach those to the side of the kettle uh, and then you put your grain basket down on top of those and that allows the grain basket to uh, sit above the surface of the liquid and drain all the wort out over the course of usually about 15, maybe 20 minutes depending on how thick uh, the mash was. At that point, you could usually just fire your controller up to 100% uh, power or you could just set it to 212 or boiling temperature at sea level and it will start to heat up towards that boil. I'll also put in my hop spider at this point and wait for the boil to start. Anyone with a 120 volt system knows that the boil is not a very strong boil, so just be aware that you're not gonna make a very large amount of gravity points up in your boil unless you boil for a very long time. Once you hit that boil, it's business as usual. Boil and add hops per your recipe. Usually about 15 minutes from the end of the boil though, I like to hook up the plate chiller and the pump uh, and I'll recirculate boiling wort through that so that sanitizes the inside of the chiller, assuming it's already been cleaned beforehand. You don't want crud to build up in it over time. Um, and that will allow you to be able to move directly from boil to chilling. Once the chilling step is complete, just go ahead, pump that wort into your fermenter and you should be good to go. Usually afterwards, I will clean the system and all of its parts individually, but for the kettle and the tubing in the grain basket, what works well for me is to do a good PBW soak. So I will dissolve about two or three tablespoons of PBW into the kettle and fill it all the way up with water, add that grain basket in, add the hop spider in, add some of your tubing and stuff like that in, and let it soak overnight and then rinse everything down clean it out the next morning and it's back to looking brand new. Sometimes the grain basket and the hop spider are a bit sticky and it's a little hard to get rid of some of the residue from the mash to the boil. So sometimes I'll have to spray it down and make sure that it gets all the crud out of it before adding it to the PBW soak. To clean the plate chiller and the pump, I just back flush them with high pressure water first. And then what I'll do is I'll circulate PBW through both of them from the kettle to the pump, through the plate chiller, back into the kettle for about 10 minutes or so. After that, I'll just disconnect them, I'll rinse it with hot water, and then let the rest of the soaking happen with the kettle and all the other parts. Cleaning the neoprene jacket is very easy as well. All you have to do is just chuck that into your washing machine. So in a sea of all-in-one electric brewing systems that range in price from about $500 all the way up to $3,000 plus, what makes the Climber Supply System different and unique and what justifies its own price point? And that's what I wanna go over here today. We're gonna to go ahead and look at this in terms of pros and cons, just like any other review video I would be doing. So pro number one is kind of shared with many of the other all-in-one systems, but it's still worth mentioning, and that is just simply ease of use and space savings. So being able to take this system and brew anywhere you have access to 120 volt outlet uh, is really awesome because I can move to various rooms of my apartment if I wanted to, but I don't really tend to brew inside as much, so I go outside where I have a, an outlet on my deck. If we brew inside, most of us are either gonna be in a basement, a garage, or a kitchen, all of which are gonna have 120 volt circuits here in the United States, so it is very, very easy to find and pick your favorite place to brew. Also, it really just takes up a very small footprint. You don't need additional vessels like a hot liquor tank, a dedicated mash tun, and dedicated boil kettle. It's all in one package about this big, and therefore it doesn't occupy that much space when it's in storage, nor when it's in usage, and that is awesome. That's a very big thing for me, especially considering I'm in an apartment and you know space is really very important in that context. And of course, another thing that it shares with many of the other all-in-one systems is a dedicated recirculation feature. So when you're mashing, work goes out from the bottom and through the pump and back up in over the top. This is a constant Vorloff. This allows the grain bed to settle and filter out your wort a lot better and you get really clean and clear wort. Uh, this is beneficial for a number of reasons. This also allows you to do things like whirlpool and recirculate through your chiller like I mentioned. Um, and it is useful for a variety of other reasons on top of that. Another pro on this system is that it actually has a stainless steel bottom. It, many competitor systems, especially in the cheaper price brackets, have plastic bottoms on them, and you can't really disconnect the uh, actual system from the plastic bottom, which is fine if you're using just the 120 volt element for a, a heat source. However, if you want to bolster your boil with either a propane burner or your kitchen stove or maybe just just uh, some other type of heat source from the bottom and you're not using the neoprene jacket or any sort of heat uh uh, insulation type thing on the bottom of the kettle, then you're actually going to be able to totally just plug and play with the claw hammer supply system. This is not something I've seen in many other competitor systems, and I think it adds a lot of value, especially if you want faster heat up times and stronger boils. 
Another pro is that this system holds an absolute ton of grain. I have fit over 18 pounds of grain into the basket and mashed in with it once. If you want to see that video, it's going to be linked up here in the corner. Uh, and I still got a five gallon beer out of that whole process. I don't think many competitor systems in a lower price bracket are able to match that. Um, but it does become very, very useful when you're brewing higher gravity beers. You should be able to reliably get up to 1070 or 1080 uh, OG just from a single mash in this system. If you want to go higher than that, you might need to look into a reiterated or a double mash. Another cool thing about the Clawhammer is that you could very easily replace the element in it if you want to move to a 240 volt element. For example, you move from place to place and all of a sudden you have access to a 240 volt circuit that you didn't have access to before. So you could keep the same system, the same kettle and everything, and you could replace it with a 240 volt element if you want to. A few other competitor systems have similar capabilities, uh, but it is something I did want to point out for this particular system. In my opinion, my favorite thing about this system and what really sets it apart from a lot of the competition in a very good way is its replaceable parts and modularity is not something you see in anything below its price point. Many of the more affordable systems out there have pumps and uh, control systems that are integrated into the kettle itself. And if something were to go wrong with them, especially during a brew day, you're pretty much out of luck on that brew day. You might have to even replace the entire system in some cases. Otherwise, you're going to have a long day of taking things apart and trying to find specific parts to order, and it could be a very real headache. Whereas the Clawhammer Supply System, every single piece of that is actually its own individual parts. The pump is actually a real pump. It's its own thing. If you want to replace it with a different one, then you totally can. It should work just fine. The controller that comes with it is also its own thing. So if something were to go wrong with the controller, it's not tied to the system. Worst case scenario, if you need to replace the controller, you can do that independent of the rest of the system. Sometimes I will have a fuse blow in that controller because something happens and it's very easy to replace that fuse. In fact, they send five fuses to you as part of the system. It's very easy to replace those fuses and in fact, they're commonly available online as a microwave fuse. If something goes wrong with the element, it's very easy to take that apart and look inside to find out exactly what's going on. It hasn't been frequent, but sometimes I've had things go wrong with the system during brew day. And it's been very easy for me to replace the necessary parts in the middle of my brew. I don't have to actually shut things down or dump a batch just to fix something with the system because that kettle is a kettle. The pump is a pump. The controller is a controller. It's not all one unit that's been sandwiched together. And in my opinion, that makes everything a lot easier to work with and it adds a lot of value as well. And the last positive for this whole system is just absolutely stellar customer service from Clawhammer Supply. I have personally emailed Kyle and Emmett several times over various different things. And every single time they've responded to me promptly, they've answered my questions uh, thoroughly and they've been more than accommodating in helping me ensure that I can keep brewing with their system. Again, they're straight up guys, they run a good company, they are very proud of their product and they stand behind it. And that's all you can really ask for. They take great care of their customers and if you're gonna be a customer in the future, I'm sure that they're gonna take great care of you as well. All right, so next we're gonna talk about cons in this system. The first one is the 120 volt element. If you are limited to that, you're gonna have very, very long heating times. Uh, as well as a, like I said, relatively weak boil. Now that being said, that's something that's universal to every 120 volt system out there. It doesn't matter what brand it comes from or how much it costs, it's gonna all perform at about the same rate. So if you're looking at faster heat up times and a stronger boil, then you would either need to add an additional heat source, either using the bottom of the kettle or switching up to a 240 volt element, which is entirely possible and very easy to do, provided that you actually have the resources to run 240 volts. The second criticism I have is that the hop spider that comes with the uh, system itself is, in my opinion, too small. It's not really very conducive for adding large amounts of hops to a beer. I only use the supplied hop spider every so often if I'm brewing something like a lager that doesn't have a lot of hops in it. Um, for the most part, I will replace the hop spider with a different one that holds more. Hop spiders are very cheap. If you want, you can get a second one from Clawhammer or you could just buy your own on the internet somewhere else that has a little bit more capacity. The next criticism I have is that the, the ball valve that, that uh, at the bottom of the kettle sits a little high off the bottom of the kettle. Uh, this could result in some additional losses at the bottom of the kettle um, and there is no dip tube that comes with it. It is a straight outlet port. I've actually talked to Kyle about this myself and I think they're looking into changing the height of that uh, outlet valve so that it's a little bit lower and that should allow people to get a little bit more beer out of their system overall. But at the end of the day, if you want to compensate for it, just add a little bit more liquid and you should be all right. Another thing to look into is that it's a little bit easy to clog this system. When you combine a plate chiller with a pump, you're gonna probably have some problems every so often if you have a high hot bill or a high protein 
uh, grist. Just be aware of that if you're brewing with a lot of hops and especially if you're hopping loose into the kettle, uh, just be careful to make sure you don't add too many like that because you could run into some issues uh, with clogging around the bazooka screen at the base of the kettle and also in the pump and the plate chill. Those three spots are the big clog spots, but again, because the system is so modular, it's very easy to just replace the pump or the plate chiller if you're having trouble with those clogging uh, with a more robust version of the same piece of equipment. The last few cons are about the basket. Sometimes the basket handle will pop off of the basket if you tweak it a certain way. So just be careful, be sure to pull it straight up out of the mesh and not pull it to the side or if you're carrying it make sure it's carrying straight you're carrying it straight up but that's just something to be aware of you can have that happen I've never had the basket handle fall off when I'm pulling the grain basket out of the wort I really only had it fall off if I'm like carrying the basket over to dump out my spent grains or if I'm just like you know cleaning it and it pops out there uh, sometimes that happens but just something to be aware of again another thing that probably could be improved I think just having a more robust way for the basket handle to attach to the basket would be awesome because it, it is relatively easy for the handle to pop out the last criticism I have of the system has to do with the basket and the method of holding it up above the wort which are uh, three little hooks that you put on uh, basically to the edge of the kettle and um, they stick out underneath the basket and you know you rest the basket on top of them this requires you to pull the basket completely out of the kettle, place the hooks in, and then set the basket back down on top of them. Every so often I end up dropping one of those hooks into the kettle <laughs> and into the mash where it is forever lost until the end of the brew day. And that can be really frustrating sometimes. Um, but various other users of the claw hammer system like Martin Keen at the Homebrew Challenge have kind of championed the idea of just using one hook and then tilting the basket. You know, and that's another way of doing it as well. I personally would like to see a different method of holding the basket up above the wort, uh, something like what the crane father does where you just quarter turn the basket and it catches on integrated hooks in the kettle that would actually be really great it's very simple and can be done with one hand of course if you happen to live in your own home where you could actually do modifications to things like the ceiling you can throw in like a hook and a pulley that way you can very easily ratchet your basket up out of the wort and then place the hooks in very you know carefully without worrying about doing it one-handed it's uh, there's a variety of ways around the problem, but I think it would be good to see a different solution implemented um, to overall make it easier for people who are brewing by themselves. So after using this system and brewing on it for essentially an entire year, uh, my experience overall has been overwhelmingly positive. I really have many more good things to say about the system than bad things. It has made my brew days much, much easier, much less complicated than my previous systems. I do really see myself continuing to use this system for the foreseeable future. Uh, I, I will probably get to a point where I'm gonna plug in a 240 volt element into it because 120 volt boils are kind of sad. Uh, but there's a lot of different ways to make them much, much more vigorous, and I've already beaten that topic to death. In my opinion, it's hitting that perfect sweet spot where you're getting a lot of value for the money. Again, I'm just gonna reiterate that modularity piece. If you have something break on this system, you don't need to buy a brand new system to fix it. And that piece alone ensures that this system is gonna last a lot longer than pretty much most of its competition. So I'm not trying to sell this system to you or shove it down your throat, but if you're interested in buying it, there is a link in the description box down below. That's all I'm gonna say about it. It's a good system, I've used it for a long time and I'll be using it for the foreseeable future. But that's my experience and that's my opinion and that's very subjective. But if you're looking at something like this, make sure you evaluate how it impacts you. Make sure that it is the right decision for you and be sure to check out what else is out there. That being said, if you do choose to go with the claw hammer system, let me know in the comment section down below. Also comment down below with your thoughts in general on this stuff. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you like videos like this, subscribe to my channel. If you wanna support the channel, there's a variety of ways to do so, but one of the best ways is through the merchandise or down below the description box where you can get this t-shirt, which is a new edition, and many others like it. Another great way to support the channel on a personal basis is through my Patreon. Uh, my Patreon supporters really are fantastic people and they've been doing amazing things for this channel. If you happen to be in the market for other types of homebrewing equipment, check out my Amazon store that is down in the description box as well. Every single piece of equipment and item in that store is something that I use on the regular and I personally vouch for it. If you wanna follow me on more than just YouTube, I am also active on Instagram. Check it out at The Apartment Brewer on Instagram. And last but certainly not least, if you have made it this far to the end of the video, I really do appreciate it and you guys are my true fans and you have my deepest thanks. I really do appreciate you guys watching all the way to the end. It does mean a lot to me. So I got nothing else for you. Until the next one, cheers.